Hello everyone, it's Marie and welcome to another video and welcome back to the Digital Nomad update videos. So it's been a while since these Digital Nomad style videos have been on my channel and that's simply because I did take about a year break from working online and living the Digital Nomad kind of life um, but I have decided now to get back into it. So in this video I'm going to basically talk about why I stopped being a Digital Nomad last year, why I'm going back to do it now and basically what kind of work I'm doing going forward. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get into it. So um, first of all, I'm just going to give a very quick, very quick summary of my digital nomad life <laughs> um, in the past. So I quit my job about two and a half years ago and I started working online teaching the English language to kids in China via the internet. So I did work as an online English teacher and also I was working as a freelance writer as well. So that was making me enough money when I travel Europe to basically afford to live, eat travel. Um, I did a lot of house sitting and other things to afford affordable accommodation as well. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what I did when I traveled Europe and it worked out very well for me. I really enjoyed being an English teacher and at the time it was really good for me. However, I did decide to stop that kind of path when I was in New Zealand and there is a few reasons why I kind of quit stopped being a digital nomad. Um, the first and main reason is my schedule got turned upside down when I went to New Zealand. So basically when I was in Europe, I could work um, two Chinese evenings. In Europe, it's great because it's like a nine to five job. However, in New Zealand, it was basically flipped upside down and I was basically working from 9 p.m. till 4 a.m. For me, that just was not doable. Like I didn't want to work through the nights and it just wasn't appropriate either with me having housemates, keeping them up all night, that kind of thing. Also in New Zealand, I did have a very good job that paid me incredibly well and gave me really good benefits. So I had no need to have an online income because my real life job incoming in New Zealand was more than enough to pay for everything I needed. I also wanted to be a bit more social when I was in New Zealand. I wanted to kind of meet people and make friends at work and when you're teaching English online you kind of are a bit confined to one room. As you know, uh, the first and foremost reason why I decided to tr become a digital nomad was because I wanted to afford travel. And that worked out very well for me when I was traveling Europe. But then when I went to New Zealand, I didn't need to work online to afford travel because I could just work a job there because I had a working holiday visa. So that's basically a quick summary of um, what I used to do and why I stopped doing it. So when I was living in New Zealand, I did work as a general laborer for about six months in Christchurch. That job paid me incredibly well. Not only did I get an hourly pay, but I also got free food and free accommodation five days a week. I'm talking eating out in a restaurant every single night, entree, main, dessert if I wanted, anything I wanted. And my accommodation was great. I'd have private rooms in hotels, my own bathroom, my own kitchen. Sometimes there would be like a sauna included. Like it was a very good standard of life. And I would say that I got a little bit spoiled in New Zealand because the work was just so good. But uh, there is a downside to having things too easy. And that is that you don't work on your own personal goals and aims. Just to give you an idea, I earned over $32,000 last year working less than a year. I must have worked about nine months total. I banked about $15,000 surplus um, savings, which I used to travel around New Zealand. I did all the big touristy things in New Zealand, things that not all backpackers can afford, like Milford Sound, Doubtful Sound, whitewater rafting, canyon swings in Queenstown. And I really got to see the whole of New Zealand really well. Um, not only that, but I was able to like drink, drink at the weekends and I was able to, you know, go to the movies and buy like travel equipment that I needed because I just had such a good amount of savings put by and income coming in when I was there. So I really was comfortable. But getting back to the point, sometimes being too comfortable isn't a good thing because it did mean that I put aside my digital nomad goals because I was just not needing to do anything. That brings me on to what's happened here in Australia. Now, I've definitely not found Australia as easy as I found New Zealand. In New Zealand, I found I could just walk into work like that. I could get amazing paid jobs very easily. And I just found that for my set of skills and my personality, I fitted in more in New Zealand and the work and the quality of work for my personal work preference was much higher standard. Here in Australia, I just find that I'm really struggling to find work that pays me well. I'm not really a good bartender and I really don't want to work in retail or hospitality. And it seems like they're the jobs that pay well for backpackers here. Things like farm work here in uh, Australia definitely don't pay like they do in New Zealand. In New Zealand, I found they pay exceptionally well. I would make over $1,200 a week picking kiwi fruit in New Zealand on contract rate. Whereas here in Australia, you find backpackers are making not even $300 a week for working full-time at peace rate picking fruit. I'm gonna make a separate video actually comparing Australia and New Zealand and my experiences and why personally I'm not the biggest fan of Australia. I'm not gonna do my 88 days and I don't plan on coming back to live or work here 
again for a second year. After this year's up, I probably won't come back unless it's for a holiday. Whereas New Zealand, on the other hand, I would just live in for the rest of my life because I had such a great experience there. I actually ended up um, working on the Sundays for a while, which was great. I did really well. I was a labourer there, but that job didn't last very long. It was only about a month long. So then I decided to go down the East Coast to find work. I did get offered a job in Adelaide, um, but once I flew there, I found out the job wasn't what they told me it was. On the phone, I was told that the hours were full time. I got there and I was only offered like 15 hours a week. Pay was much lower than they originally offered. And there was other reasons too that I'm not gonna go into, but basically the job in Adelaide didn't work, which is a real shame because I ended up flying there with my last $500 and by the time I got there I had maybe $300 left to my whole name and that kind of um, Stressed me out a little bit because I realized I was so low on money here in Australia It's really hard to get jobs in the winter time It seems in the summertime everyone's hiring but in the winter It's just not so easy. I found myself in Adelaide with not much money and it's kind of afraid that I would be on the street. I put an ad out on Facebook asking people to help me, saying basically, do you have a workaway opportunity, work for accommodation option, or, you know, any jobs that I can take, I can go anywhere in the, in Australia, I just need to work, basically. Somebody volunteering at this work away here, messaged me on Facebook and said that I should come here and do some work in exchange for accommodation. So obviously I flew here immediately. So now I'm just outside of Sydney working um, in the, Highlands and I'm doing uh, basically work for accommodation and food, which is awesome So I'm not on the streets and I'm actually managing to take the time while I'm here to work on my digital nomad income and online income and stuff That leads me to where I am now. I'm in Sydney, which is really awesome I love living here in Sydney and I am very much working towards finding a hostel or a hotel in the center of Sydney where I can actually work for accommodation in the center because here I'm on the outskirts and I would like to get in the city centre soon. Um, so while I'm looking for that, what I'm doing right here is I'm focusing a lot more now on my online income. A few weeks ago when I made that ad saying, help me please, a travel blogger reached out to me and he offered me uh, a job writing blog posts for him. So now I have one um, very frequent person that I work for, he gives me work um, very, very regularly, like very regularly. So I'm bringing in a, a bit of side income online doing work for him. There's also another guy that reached out to me who's based in Sydney and he's a tour guide, he has a tour guide company and he has also um, asked me to write some content for his blog too. So that's two people now that I'm working for writing blog posts. So I've decided that I'm gonna try and take on this writing thing since I seem to be quite good at it. Like I'm actually doing a very good job writing for, these, for the first guy and he's very happy with my work and the articles are coming out great. So I've decided that I'm gonna try to take to writing freelance as my thing and my niche because I do seem to be quite good at writing, especially when it comes to travel content. So in the past, I made the big mistake of being very broad and trying to apply for all kinds of online jobs. Whereas this time I'm trying to niche it in and become like a travel blog content writer for other people and also for myself. So that brings me on to the next part of my digital nomad kind of goals and aims, I guess. My main ultimate long-term goal is to get my own travel blog going and earning me a good income and also to get my YouTube channel growing. So that's kind of the main goal now. Not only am I writing for other people, but I'm also writing for myself and making content for myself because obviously my work is first and foremost the most important thing and I want to try and grow my channel and grow my website and blog um, so that I can also make a living off it like many other people do. Along with that comes um, affiliate marketing and selling things via Amazon affiliate. And so that's something I'm setting up right now as we speak. Another good thing about these freelance writing jobs is it's getting me back into writing more frequently so that now I can focus on writing for <laughs> so that now I can focus on writing for my own website. Um, so it's kind of getting me back into the writing mindset, if you know what I mean. So now I'm writing more constantly and more frequently, even for myself, like I've got all these ideas written down in this book and every day now I'm writing new things for myself and uh, not just for other people. So that's another kind of plus that comes with working for other people. Uh, right now, I'm not tending to look towards teaching English online. I definitely will look into seeing if there's some companies that are flexible that I could work with, but I feel like I don't really want to be teaching online anymore. Although it was a great means to do it back then, I feel like that kind of chapter of my online work has ended. You had to have a white background behind you, you had to have good internet connection, and it was just a bit more rigid and less flexible. Whereas um, if I was doing more writing and blogging and that kind of thing, I can just do it anywhere I want. I can sit at a cafe on the beach and do it. I can sit in a hostel and do it. I don't have to worry about noise or background or timing or schedule or anything. So um, ultimately, I think right now, I'm not really looking into teaching anymore. If a good opportunity comes up to 
me, I won't dismiss it, but currently I'm just focusing more on freelance writing and my own work. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to talk about. I hope that you're enjoying seeing this Digital Nomad style update videos again. They're definitely gonna be coming more frequently now, um, maybe not every single month, but as and when I feel like I need to update and tell you some new things about my kind of improvements or progress in the Digital Nomad online freelancing kind of work area if that makes sense so yeah i'm just gonna end this video here uh thank you so much for watching it uh give me a like if you enjoyed it and comment below have you been watching me ever since i uploaded my first ever digital nomad update video it's so crazy to me thinking that it's been over two and a half years since I made the first video. When I look back at that first one, I realize how new I was to it all. I'd never even earned an, on an online income. So it's so nice just to see how I'm learning now to niche myself down and I'm knowing more how to go about it and how to get back into it so much faster and quicker than I did when I first started. So yeah, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know how long you've been following this digital nomad journey. And yeah, definitely if you haven't already, subscribe to see more videos about working online, freelancing, uh, traveling the world, solo travel, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, I'm just gonna end this video here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.